In today's video, I want to show you some not so known tips and tricks that you can use in Python to supercharge your data analytics workflow. These are very simple hacks that are very intuitive and simple to apply, yet quite useful if you want to bring your Python skill to the next level. If you have other interesting tips, make sure you comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of content. As always, check the video description to get all the resources mentioned in this video. And well, if you are ready, let's get into the first tip. Okay, so tip number one is using what is called Jupyter data tables. And before we jump into it, uh, I get a lot of questions from you guys asking what platform I use to run my Python codes. And as you can see here in my screen, I am within Jupyter, um, which is my favorite platform to run Python codes, especially if I need to analyze data. It's very easy to use. Uh, you can visualize uh, data in the um, Jupyter itself. And the easiest way to access this is to download another software that is called Anaconda. And then within Anaconda, everything is for free, of course. Uh, within Anaconda, you will be able to access and launch uh, Jupyter in your browser directly. And so this is what I've done now. So I created this uh, workbook that you will find in the video description. And uh, let me show you what Jupyter data tables does. So in here, I simply, well, import NumPy and Pandas. There are two um, uh, popular libraries for data analytics. And then I'm importing, so from Jupyter data tables, I'm importing init data, data tables mode. And then I initialize data tables mode. And what it does, I'll show you in a second. So here I'm uh, simply reading a CSV file that I have stored in my machine that is called coviddata.csv. So I'm uh, reading the CSV file and I save that within a data frame that I call DFT. And then I uh, show uh, DFT. I want to see a sample and uh, see what's inside this data frame that I just created. So usually when I run this code, uh, there will be a, a very simple um, sample of the of the data without a lot of information. But now that I initialize data uh, tables mode, if I run this code, this is exactly what's happening. So as you can see here, I have the, the data frame that I uh, just created. But uh, in one view, I have a lot more information. I can already perform some exploratory data analysis based on the simple code that I run. Um, so what you can see is obviously the name of the columns. I see immediately the data types, which is something that I could do in Python, but uh, with a different line of codes. I also see the distribution of the data for each of the columns. Again, uh, this can be super useful information that, again, is achievable, but uh, only if I run and uh, you know write a different uh, line of codes in, uh, in my workbook. And then the other cool thing that I can do is actually searching for a specific value within the data frame. So here, for example, I'm typing United Kingdom and is um, automatically filtering uh, everything by United Kingdom and only showing me the rows where uh, you have the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, obviously, uh, here there are uh, 10 entries only, but I can expand that as well. And I can also change the sorting. So I can, uh, as you can see, I can basically play around with uh, the data set uh, only with, um, with this simple library that I imported from data tables. So yeah, pretty useful, I would say. Not many people are aware of this, so if you think it's valuable, make sure to use it going forward. Right, the next tip uh, is how to restart Jupyter kernel without losing variables. So in this piece of code, I'm defining a variable that I actually call variable, and this is equal to this uh, string, uh, which is hello world. And then um, what I'm going to do now is that if I restart the kernel and I try to uh, retrieve this variable, because the kernel restarted, then all of my variables uh, have been deleted. If I don't want uh, that to happen, what I can do is um, create in this line with a percentage sign and then store. And then I'm going to call variable, which is the variable that I just created. So let me run this piece of code here. So uh, here it says stored variable. Uh, which is a string. And now what I want to do is I'm going to kernel and I'm going to uh, click on uh, restart and clear output. So I'm going to click on there. And then and then now what I want to do is to retrieve the variable that I created before restarting the kernel. So now I'm going to write this line of code. Uh, so percentage sign store. Now I'm going to do R and then I'm going to call variable and I want to print variable. So uh, if I run this piece of code here, as you can see, even if I restarted the kernel, 
I'm still able to retrieve the hello world variable even if I uh, didn't define it um, again after restarting the kernel. So pretty useful. Um, obviously, this will become even more useful when you have a very long Python code and maybe you're interested in running only one piece of code at a time and maybe you know you created a variable uh, at the at the start of that of that specific code so again pretty useful and uh, make sure to try it in on your own next tip is using an extension that is called mito so uh, this is something that i find super super interesting to use so what i'm going to do is uh, simply installing the mito installer so i'm going to run this piece of code here then I'm also installing the uh, package called uh, Mito Sheet. And then I need to activate the extension. So I'm going to run these other uh, two lines here. Now, in my case, I don't need to restart the kernel, but um, I, I would suggest because I already installed the packages, but I would suggest to restart the kernel if uh, you didn't have this package installed in your, in your machine. And now what I'm going to do is to import in the Mito sheet uh, library that we just installed. I'm going to create a COVID data data frame, which is again reading from my uh, COVID data CSV file. And then I'm going to run the uh, COVID data using the Mito, uh, Mito sheet uh, package. So let me run this piece of code in here. And then now what you can see in the output is probably you will uh, probably recognize this because it is exactly the Excel interface. But yeah, this is pretty cool because what I have in here is within my Jupyter platform, I now have Excel and it is actually showing the COVID data CSV file. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. As you can see here, there are all pretty much everything that Excel has as well. But the other interesting thing is that I can play around now with this data. And so, for example, let's, uh, let's do something like this. So let's uh, filter by location. I'm going to add a filter uh, when the location, let's say that we want India. So uh, India, there is nothing like this. Maybe with the capital, yeah, with the capital letter, we have India as a value for location. And I'm going to click on uh, uh, return. And... As you can see, as soon as I apply, so now I can uh, close this one and I know I see that, you know, now the location is filtered by only India and I have only India values in here. But as soon as I uh, added the filter, automatically you uh, would have seen that Mito created this other block of code where is basically giving the result of my filtering. So basically what I was doing here using the Mito sheet is replicated in this Python code. And as you can see here, he applied the India filter uh, that I created myself using Mito sheet. So he is pretty much using the Excel interface and uh, doing different actions in this Excel interface. And uh, this package will automatically generate a code based on the action that you perform. So again, especially if you don't have a strong foundation of uh, Python, but for example, if you know more about Excel, this uh, becomes a super interesting package because again, you can play around in Excel and see how to do the same tasks in uh, Python. Okay, and now the next tip is called pivot tables. So uh, pretty self-explanatory. So this package will uh, probably do something similar compared to what we do in Excel when we use uh, pivot table. So again, as always, make sure to install uh, this package. Uh, in this case, it's called pivot tables JS. So I'm gonna install this package here. Um, I'm already installing it. And then now what I'm doing is, well, I'm importing pandas just because I use it to read the COVID data CSV file. And then I'm importing pivot underscore UI. And then I'm going to uh, visualize my data frame that I call the F using uh, pivot UI. So I'm going to run this piece of code in here. And as you can see here, now we have in our Jupyter this uh, interface that is pretty similar to what we have in Excel when we work with the pivot tables. So let me put, for example, location in here. I can simply, you know, drag and drop. And as you can see here now, I have the total number of values for each of the locations. And I can do count. I can do count uh, unique values. Uh, you know, I can do the, the sum. I can do different things. So, for example, let's do, um, you know, new, maybe the population. 
So let me put population in here. And as you can see, you have also the population um, by uh, location. So yeah, pretty similar to um, uh, normal pivot tables, but again, super friendly and easy way to analyze our data. But instead of doing, uh, you know, multiple uh, lines of codes in Python, we can simply use this interface in the same way that we use it in Excel. So again, we are trying here to combine our skills in Excel and our skills in Python and kind of use them uh, in a combined way. You can also play around with uh, this drop down here. So for example, I select in horizontal bar chart, obviously uh, is not uh, formatted in a correct way, but you got the idea and then I can obviously change different things. Okay, next tip is using what is called IPyVisu. I hope I pronounce it in a correct way, but uh, let me show you what this does. So again, as always, I'm going to install IPVisu at the start of the code. And then what I'm doing now is again importing uh, pandas um, from IPVisu. I'm, I'm importing chart, data and config. I'm going to read actually a CSV file, which is a Titanic CSV file that is uh, stored in actually the, uh, the IPVisu uh, website. And in here, I'm just going to use a sample code that I found to um, visualize this uh, Titanic CSV file in a specific way. And so let me quickly show you what this does. And this is the uh, animation that he has created. So it gives the number of uh, uh, passengers of the Titanic, so the count uh, divided by gender, and also divided by the people that survived and the people who died. So as you can see here, the, there was a specific animation that has been created using this library. And this is pretty much what this uh, whole piece of code does. So it's probably not as straightforward. There is a lot of uh, configuration in case you want to animate, especially if you want to animate the chart. But um, again, you can use the documentation that you find in um, IPyVisu um, library so that uh, you know if you want to play around with it and change animations then you know how to configure the different type of animations so i would say pretty cool way pretty cool library to uh, yeah make your animations a bit more interactive obviously you know the way to uh, use this is probably to record your screen and as soon as you run the code recording these kind of animations so that you can then you know get a sort of a video that you can put uh, for example in a presentation or in, uh, you know, embedded in maybe on a website as well, or in whatever other projects you're working on. And now the last tip that I wanted to show you is actually a library that is called uh, Jupyter Notify. Again, this is something that is applicable if you're using Jupyter to run your Python code. So again, as always, I'm going to install the Jupyter Notify package, and then I'm going to write this code that uh, says just a percentage uh, sign and then load underscore ext. And then I'm going to load uh, Jupyter Notify. Uh, so this is just to uh, load the Jupyter Notify extension. Then I have another block of code. It's kind of a random block of code that I, that I have in here. What this uh, package does is that it will uh, notify me when uh, the uh, code that I'm running uh, has, uh, has finished to run and, and so I can check the output. So again, this is pretty useful in case you have, uh, you know, piece of code that maybe take some time to run and maybe, you know, while you wait for the code to run, instead of going back and forth into your Jupyter to uh, check if the code has run successfully or not, what you can do is using this extension so that you can, you know, change a page or maybe you're uh, uh, browsing on the web or, you know, you're using a different app, but you still want to get a notification as soon as your code um, has, uh, has run successfully. And so if you, if you notice in this piece of code in here, in this long block that starts with the input random, I also put this line that is called, uh, that I am writing percentage and then notify. This is the line that I basically input so that I'm telling Jupyter to notify me when I run this uh, piece of code and when the run has been successful. And so if I then run this piece of code in here, this should uh, load very fast. But as you can see here on the bottom right, I got the notification saying that the cell execution has finished. And so again, pretty useful if you're multitasking, if your code takes a bit of time to run. So again, make sure to try it out yourself. Uh, let me know if you find it useful. 
Um, this is, uh, again, something that not many people uh, know about and, and use in their day to day, but again, could be an interesting uh, trick to, uh, to implement in your workflow. All right, these are the simple hacks that you can implement very easily today to analyze your data in a smarter and faster way. If you got value from this video, make sure to put a like and subscribe to my channel. This really helps me to reach out to even more people. And let me know in the comments your favorite tip that you will use going forward. And I will be very interested to see if you know more similar hacks because at the end of the day, we are all here learning from each other. If you want to practice your Python skills and work on real projects, make sure to check out these other two videos that I will link here and well enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.